All right, here we go again, right? Uh, this is for the uh, 130 controls class. Uh, we're going to try to explain this board to you a little bit. Uh, take it piece by piece. Won't be but a couple minutes long or so. Um, give you some ideas to look for, and uh, hopefully uh, hopefully you'll get it, and then we can move on to uh, another one and see how well you do with that, okay? Uh, we'll start down here in the bottom uh, of the screen, right? You'll notice that... Uh, Right down here is uh, the all too familiar uh, low voltage terminal strip. We've got our common, green, red, W, Y. Uh, all those are just, uh, you know, screw terminals where you put your thermostat wire and tighten the screw and uh, crimp it down on there, make a good connection. Uh, but if you look at that one on the end, it looks like it says W1. Um, but it doesn't. It actually says something like twin. So I'm going to scroll down, right? And you'll see it says twin. All right. I'm going to go over twin uh, with you tomorrow um, in the class. And, um, you know, this is pretty much just a low voltage terminal. Uh, the twin is going to be extra. Uh, you can actually do exactly that. You can twin uh, this unit to another one and you'd have two of them. So I think we all know what twins are, right? Uh, but real quick while I'm here, um, I think we know why the R and the C is there. Um, G is for the indoor fan. That's the blower motor. W is going to be for our heat circuit. That's going to eventually uh, wind up turning on the gas valve. Uh, but why do we have the Y terminal here? Okay. Um, there's one reason why this board, being a furnace, has the Y terminal. And it's not because uh, the furnace does air condition. Um, it's because that the furnace needs to know when the air condition is being called for so it can turn on the right blower speed okay which is uh i'm gonna move up and show you that as well okay so up here at the top of the board uh you can see on the top left there's a heat a cool a park uh actually a couple parks um and those are your terminals coming out of those um out of those little blower relays on the board, those big black, uh, you know, raised boxes on the board we talked about before in the defrost and, and uh, uh, classes like that. Um, but you have a, you can have a multiple speed motor, a PSC motor, uh, three speeds, you know, high, medium, and low. And you can put the heat speed on one, uh, the cool speed on the other one, and you can park the other terminal so it's up out the way. So high is heat or actually low would be heat maybe cool would be a high speed and then what do you do with medium you put it on the park terminal okay um, the line and the transformer uh, across the top of the board is going to be uh, your line power coming in uh, all these split system furnaces uh, if it's not a package unit then it's going to be a uh, 120 volt appliance so that line is going to be your l1 coming in okay uh, transformer is probably where the high voltage for the transformer is going to connect to power it. Uh, and then across the right hand side going down, um, you know, you'll, you'll see over here, uh, basically we have this terminal uh, area called neutrals. Every one of these is a place to do your neutral connection. If you remember anything from, uh, you know, the earlier electrical classes, um, L1 uh, is the only line that carries power, but for a power source, we have to have two uh, conductors basically to complete the path. And that neutral, while it doesn't carry voltage, it remains, um, you know, it's, it's a necessary part so that we get a complete circuit. So all these over here are going to be where you would put your neutrals, and they're typically a white wire. So your blower motor would be a neutral. You would have a neutral coming in from your main power. Your hot service igniter would be uh, part of this neutral bank here, uh, one side of it. Uh, your inducer motor would be a neutral. Uh, your transformer, if it's not already labeled, uh, you've pretty much every load in the system uh, is going to be connected to that neutral bar. So you'll see a bunch of white wires just go there and terminate. Okay, uh, and we've got our standard stuff uh, like the three amp fuse. You know, we know that that's going to protect our R circuit. Uh, like I said, all these little black boxes on here is going to be a relay of some type. We've got our processor down here. You know, the brain of the system. A uh, bunch of resistors and stuff that we don't worry about. Um, and the last couple things I'll just go over with you. Um, well, two more, actually. Um, these plugs. All right. This down here is plug one. Uh, you can actually, if you see if I can't steady my hand a little bit, right? 
you can look right here it says plug one p1 we've gone over that before on different boards but it means the same thing uh, this raised box here is going to be the female side of a 12 connector plug okay so you're going to have 12 conductors that are ultimately going to come back here and it's more so just plug and play um, they could all be loose like the neutrals are independent terminals but uh, they put it in a plug they want it to fit a certain way uh, to go with this board so that the sequence of operation the safety checks they all follow uh, you know um, like they're supposed to you don't miswire anything if you take a neutral from right here and put it down here it doesn't matter because it's just a neutral um, it's, it's, it's not going to make a huge difference. Um, but with these plugs down here, if you pull one off and you put it back wrong, then you can interrupt the sequence of operation. So that's our, our main plug, our plug one. It's got 12 conductors in it uh, that go you know, all over the system to the rollout switches. And that's what your lab is on for that 80% Goodman furnace. Right? The other plug is going to be right here. You can see it between the, the terminals at top. It's a P2, plug 2. This is actually, if you follow along in your wiring diagram, um, this plug is where we get two high voltage uh, sides of power, or two high voltage lines going out to two different loads. One load is going to be to our hot surface igniter, and the neutral is going to come back over here. And then the other side is going to be to our inducer motor, uh, and the neutral, of course, is going to come back over here. So, um, important plug, both of them, um, but nothing you can't figure out. Uh, hopefully this board is, is pretty simple to you, uh, given everything we've covered up to now. Um, uh, last couple things, I'm going to fire my cameraman, but uh, the last couple things, right? There is a terminal, uh, two of them up here, right? Uh, it's called HUM, and there's another one over here that's called your EAC, right? EAC is an electronic air cleaner. It is a high voltage uh, air filter, basically, um, that you could actually wire in uh, to be powered off of this board. Um, I doubt you'll ever see one, but you, you, you could, uh, the humidifier though, uh, the problem with a lot of, uh, climates that use, uh, furnaces is that, uh, they run for so long. It gets to be so cold that, um, the furnace dries the air out too much. Um, not the same with the heat pump. Okay. But, um, with a furnace, you may need to include a humidifier to put some moisture back into the air. Um, and if you had a humidifier that you would wire in, um, you could wire it into this uh, furnace board and power it so that when the furnace is running, uh, you get an output of power from this terminal that actually turns on um, your humidifier and allows you to put some of that moisture back into the air so you don't have, you know, your, your headaches, your, um, your little carpet, um, uh, what do they call it? Uh, static electricity, right? When you rub your, walk across the carpet and uh, you touch a doorknob, you know, uh, it shocks you. Um, that's because your humidity in your house is low. Um, so you can definitely power the humidifier or an air cleaner off of this uh, just by, you know, connecting the wire to that terminal. So, um, and last but not least is over here, you have a, uh, a set of times. Uh, it looks kind of like your defrost board did your 90, 120, 150, 180. Um, but we're not worried about defrost on this, right? Uh, what we're worried about is how long the blower stays on after we finish a call for heat. Okay, so you can actually set up a, a blower time delay before it cuts off um, based off of, you know, your particular needs or wants. Um, just by moving this little dip switch, um, you can set it up for uh, anywhere from a minute and a half to uh, three minutes worth of time that your blower will just run to cool down the heat exchanger, get all that heat uh, that's been generated out of it. So uh, hopefully you, uh, you understand.